Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Karen's Kitchen. I come to you with another new recipe, one I've never made before. One that I'm sure that... Good, eat. Good afternoon, Vanita. You're the first one here. This is a recipe that I'm sure everybody's going to want to try. Let me go ahead and share this out to be asked for a share. And then I'm going to go ahead and share it out myself. And... I'm gonna go. I'm gonna share it out first, and then I will. I will ask you guys to share it out. Um, I like to do that to make sure that everything is is a uh, you know. I, I touch all my bases because there are people that like to watch this. Thank you for inviting your followers. Okay, I'm gonna ask for a share. All right. Um, welcome to everybody coming in, and thank you for coming in today. Hi, good to see you. Welcome. Hi, Natasha. Good to see you. I know um, I'm going to put my put my thing down so you can see. My, there's nothing in my pot right now, but you'll see me as I'm putting the things into my pot when I'm putting in here. So we're just a little. There we go. Okay, there we go. For, and I'll tell you what I'm putting in as I'm putting it in. I'm going to put in two cans of pumpkin puree. And I have to use this this pot because they say the, the pumpkin will bubble up so you have to have a big enough pot so I'm deciding to use this if I use the regular um, two quart it's not gonna be big enough you have to at least have four quart so I'm, I'm using I'm making sure I got enough because it's gonna bubble up and there is no liquid in here except for maybe a maple syrup and they call for apple cider since I didn't have apple cider they said you can use apple juice as a as a, uh, a, a substitute so I bought some apple juice today so I can put that in here I'm putting in the two cans of two cans of pumpkin puree. This ought to be nice. This would be something I've never made before. You know, this being the holiday season, people might want to make this for their holiday come, holiday table coming up. Um, thank you for all the hearts. Let me get a little bit more out here. I'll throw these in the trash. There, get those out of the way. Okay, now I'm going to put in three quarter cup of maple syrup, and I haven't measured it out yet, so I'll measure it out right in front of you. And I did buy more maple syrup because I knew it'd run out probably. And that's three quarters cup. As you can see, this is my measure all. There's three quarter cup. rinse that out so it doesn't get sticky all right now I'm going to put in one half cup of they say apple cider but I'm going to use um, uh, I'm going to use apple juice instead and I haven't opened this up yet so okay whoa gotta be careful this thing wants to um, will be kind of hard at first Oh, there we go. It's always hard to get something started the first thing when you first do it. There we go. Because it wants to get all over everything. Get this over here so mixed up. All right, now put the apple juice in here. Now, I think the rest of it is teaspoon stuff. Okay. And I got juice of half a lemon, which I, I have a citrus juicer that I use to, to juice the half a lemon. I'll put that in there. Um, now, two teaspoons of ground cinnamon. Everybody knows I don't use cinnamon, I use cardamom. So I will go ahead and put that in here. Two teaspoons of, of ground cardamom instead of, instead of cinnamon. Welcome to everybody coming in. Okay, that's a half. Okay, here's a te teaspoon. And these are from Pampered Chef as well. These are the stackables. I decided to use these today. And then um, one teaspoon of ground ginger, which ginger is really good. So I'll have a real good flavor afterwards. Thank you all for coming in and sharing this out and supporting me. I really appreciate it. Let's see. 
Okay, a half a cup or half a teaspoon of ground cloves. Okay. That's a tablespoon. I don't want that one. That's too much. Oh, that was really good. Oh, this is better. This is a tablespoon. That's way too big. Good thing I looked at that. All right. And an eighth of a teaspoon of ground nutmeg, which is very, very little. And that's a quarter. Don't put an eighth in here. I think that's a quarter, but I got an eighth in here. I was, think I grabbed the eighth and I, I grabbed the quarter. Um, Well, I know what I can do. I've got it. I'll do it on my other one here. This in here has an eighth on it. I'll just use this one. There. Because you don't want very much. Okay. There we go. Let's use that one. That'll work. That will work. I'll put these two back. Okay. And... All that's left is the eighth teaspoon of salt. And everybody knows that I use sea salt. Well, hi, Erlene. You're just, you're just coming in at a good time. I'm just putting all my ingredients in my pot. They said you got to use a soup pot. I guess that's what you could call this from Pampered Chef. And I still haven't got my Pampered Chef stuff yet, but I'm hoping it'll come. Um, I'm going to put this up on... you got to stir this at all times. Um, this is going to be a different kind of a recipe. Um, this is going to be, and the reason I'm using this pot is because they say the pumpkin butter, as you can see, is it's, it's a little liquid with all the, um, with the apple, apple, apple um, juice and the maple syrup. This is going to bubble up, so you need, and I have to keep stirring this, too. Get this started and get it all mixed around. Oh, thank you for the super heart, Stacy. Well, um, I did... I did apply for my super super broadcast status yesterday because I happened to finally get all my super hearts. So let's pray and hope that I get qualified. I'm hoping and praying that they don't tur turn me down like they did you, Stacy, because that's a hassle. They said they would let me know, and I haven't heard anything yet. I suppose it takes time. Yeah, I suppose it takes time. In fact, I got a little more than 185,000. So I applied, and so let's hope. You know, if they do turn me down, I'll just keep because I know I've got more than five with over a. Uh, right amount of, of viewers and, and uh, replay viewers. Replay viewers is harder to get sometimes than the viewers. Viewers I have plenty, but it's getting the replay viewers. But I have a couple that have 95, 100 replay viewers. So, oh, it's, oh I figured, I figured so. Anyway, as you can see, I'm sure I'm stirring this right now. I'm going to get it hot. Um, pick this up off the floor. Um, this is what I use for my, <laughs> I use, this is a microfiber tongue. I like to use that for, for things I like to keep nice. Anyway, this is a simple recipe. Um, this is a pumpkin butter. Um, I've never had pumpkin butter before. How do you apply for it? Well, you have to have 185,000 stars or super hearts in order to get it. Um, people will give you super hearts. Like I just got some a little bit ago. People give you super hearts. And when you get 185,000, then you go on there. There is a place on Periscope right in the app um, in your settings where you go in and apply. You just fill out the application. You have to put in your email. You have to put in two um, usernames for two, two different uh, social networks. I used Instagram and I used Twitter. And then, then they'll take it from there. So, and they'll evaluate and see if you're, you've got enough to meet the requirements. Because there's a requirement you have to have 50 viewers and 75 replay viewers of, out of, uh, for five um, periscopes. And I've got more than that, so I know I'm should be okay. So here lately, because I've been sharing it out, and people have been sharing out with for me too, so it's been helping. As you can see, this is, it's, it's, there, there's the pumpkin puree. And, and what I used was, like I said, two cans of pumpkin puree. You could probably make your own pumpkin if you wanted to, too. And I know Stacy's done that. If you buy pumpkin, make your own pumpkin puree. It'd probably be cheaper than buying the cans. But I happen to have plenty of pumpkin puree sitting around here for different recipes. So I thought I'd just go ahead and use it. And, and uh, 
this is going to be a, a good pumpkin butter once I get it going. I'm, I've got it set up on, I think it's on medium. Let me see what the thing says. <sighs> yeah, medium high. Now, let me go over here and put that in between the two. There we go. Okay. So it's going to, bubble, it's going to bubble up, and that's why you say you got to use a soup pot, because it will bubble up. Um, because somebody didn't use a soup pot that had done this originally, and she said she got it all over everything. So I can imagine that that was a mess. So you got to make sure you got a big enough pot. You know, I could have probably used my other um, two one that I got from from Pampered Chef, the the two quart. But I thought, well, it might not be enough. So I said, I'll use my soup pot. Welcome to Periscope for the very first time. Use my soup pot, and uh, I'll, I'll stand here and talk to you a little bit while I'm waiting for this to um, get. Uh, because it's got to get hot. So I put it up on high and then I'll keep stirring it. But, you know, making your own ingredients, making your own foods is, um, uh, ah, uh, early and she won't, it won't let me stay on it. Uh, that's, <laughs> that's fine. Um, anyway, when you know you make your own foods, you don't have to guess what's in it. You know exactly what's in it. You don't, you don't have to say, well, you know, is there chemicals in here? When you make it yourself, you don't put those harsh chemicals in there. You put all good chemicals, all good ingredients, nothing that'll harm you. As you see, I didn't put anything in here that'll harm me whatsoever. Um, I know this is going to be, it's going to be beautiful. It's going to be a beautiful pumpkin butter when I get done. Um, yes, you have, when you, good. When you, when you make things from scratch and they turn out good, you feel good about it because um, I've had trouble in the past, things not turning out when I make them from scratch. Uh, like my donuts. And I had a hard time at first, but I made another batch and they turned out good. Now, those that did not see my, my muffins, I can show you those muffins. I'll get them out and show them to you. These are my, actually the banana chocolate chip muffins. I had to buy some muffin pans, but look how they turned out. Didn't they turn out nice? They're actually very, very good. All vegan. I keep them covered up with the Scott towels so they don't get um, dried out. But they are really good. I mean, they're good for breakfast, you know. And I have I didn't have some donuts this morning, but I'll eat some pump eat some of those muffins tomorrow. But next week I plan on making some pumpkin muffins because I saw a recipe for that on Pinterest. I'm gonna make the pumpkin muffins. So I've got plenty of pumpkin puree for that, so I'll make be making that. So. This should be starting to get hot. It's not quite yet, but it should be. I don't want to put it too high. Thank you for, for coming in and sharing this out and uh, being here for me and supporting me because I sure do appreciate this because it's because of you that I come in here every day and I want to do these periscopes because um, you do support me and you want me to come in here and you and you want me to show you how to use kitchen kitchen tools and how to cook properly. Um, and if, if people don't know you, follow Stacy. She doesn't do many, she has a new periscope now, but she's also a vegan. And uh, it's because of her, her and, and uh, Philip Gibson. He doesn't come on much anymore. He's, he's the overcomer. But it's those two that really kind of got me started on the vegan, vegan lifestyle because um, Stacy has been on it for years. And I knew if she could do it, I could do it. So I decided to start doing it, and it's been well over a year and a half, and I just keep going. I, and I'm going to continue to go, too. Sure, you're going to have a few problems where you're going to maybe, you know, start gaining a little bit now and then. But it's going to all come off eventually because I'm, I'm gearing myself up for just two meals a day, breakfast and lunch. Oh, you still do YouTube and Instagram? I haven't been going on your Instagram. All your, I'll have to go back on your YouTube and Instagram, Stacy. I haven't been going on there in a while. I'll have to go back on there and, and watch those. So, because I have both, YouTube and Instagram. So I'll have to get back on there and watch those. But glad you told me. But um, it's because of you and Philip that, that I am in the, the, the situation I'm in because you kept me grounded. Because I know if you guys can do it, I can do it too. It wasn't easy when I first started. Let me tell you, it was not easy because it was very, very difficult. Because I, wanted, I had a tendency to want to go back to the way I was at before I started on this. And I said, no. I can't do that. I got to keep going. Um, amen. That's right. To God be the glory. I give God all the praise. I don't take any of the glory for myself. It's, it's God because God put me where, where I'm at. He put me in this in this uh, vegan lifestyle, and I intend to stay because I know I feel better. 
and I intend to, and I, and the thing of it is, when I put on, put on new clothes that I just bought, and they're, they're a smaller size, I, I say, oh my goodness, I can fit into these now. So it makes me feel really good that I can wear smaller clothes and not have to worry. You know, I've gone down a few dress sizes. It's really amazing. Oh, uh, thank you, Stacy. I know everybody keeps telling me I do look great. You know, hi, Deb. Good to see you. Here's my pumpkin butter that's in my pan. It hasn't, it hasn't started doing anything yet, but I've got everything... And I'll tell you what's in here, Deb, since you just came in. Okay. Uh, I had two 15-ounce cans of pumpkin puree, a three-quarter cup of maple syrup, a half a cup. They call it for apple cider. Since I didn't have apple cider, I used apple juice, um, organic apple juice, and a juice of half a lemon. Uh, welcome to Periscope for the very first time. Um, two teaspoons of cardamom. I don't use cinnamon, so I use cardamom instead. Um, ginger, a teaspoon of ginger. A half a teaspoon of cloves, an eighth of uh, ground nutmeg, and an eighth of teaspoon of salt, which is sea salt. Now, there's some people who may not use nutmeg and cloves. That's up to them. I still use them. So, um, you do what you want to do because no, no um, recipe is set in stone anyway. I like to do everything pretty much the first time the way it, the way it is, and then maybe the next time tweak it because I never know how it's going to come out. So, as you can see, this is going to be a pretty good recipe. Let me step away for a minute. Okay. All right, there we go. Welcome to everybody coming in, and thank you for coming in and sharing this out, being here. I do appreciate it. Um, Thank you so much. Now it's starting to get hot, so I've got to keep stirring. I believe I have. To, what does it say? It's got to. I see. I got to. Once I get it boiling, then I got to reduce the heat to simmer, and I got to. I got to uh, simmer it for 25 minutes, and I'll just um, stirring occasionally. So then I'll just put it. I'll put it up. Put my tripod up, so then you you can see me a little bit better until it gets done after 25 minutes, and then I'll put it back down. Let you see what it looks like. Um, is this has to go into a jar, and I have to let it um, set for 15 minutes before I can transfer it to a jar, and then you have to cool it for an hour at room temperature before you can put it in the refrigerator. Now, they say you put it in the refrigerator, it lasts two weeks in your jar, and if you put it in the freezer, it lasts up to two months. So this so this will last for a while. So, um, and the way I eat toast and stuff, and I can put it on toast, you can put it on, put it on anything that you want to put it on. And um, you have to try it out, and I'm sure that that somebody's going to be wanting to try this recipe. Uh, see, it's starting to bump. It wants to, uh, let's see, it wants to, it wants to come up on me. That's why I got this big pot so it won't get all over me because it gets all over the burnt burn. And I, want, I don't want to repaint my kitchen with pumpkin. I tell you that right now. I don't want to repaint my kitchen with pumpkin. <laughs> that wouldn't be any, any fun at all. It's the same thing when I use my Vitamix. I have to make sure I got the lid on because if I don't have that lid on and I'm, I'm making soup or whatever I'm making, I'll repaint my kitchen because it'll fly all over the place. I almost did that one day too. I was, I was had walked away from my 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 uh, Vitamix and I saw the lid starting to come up and I hurried up and put it back down so it wouldn't paint repaint my kitchen. Is <laughs> because <laughs> that wouldn't have been good. Uh, I had to be scraping food up off the ceiling and I don't think I'd run get up on the ladder and scrape it off. <laughs> my son wouldn't want to do it either. So. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so, oh, I want you to remember my grandson in your prayers. My eight-year-old grandson. My daughter had to pick him up from school and take him to the doctor for some unknown reason. I don't know if he bit a hangnail or whatever, but he got pus under his cuticle, and it had, it had got infected. And she had to take him to the doctor. And he has to have anti antibiotics for it. And he doesn't like those antibiotics, and she said it swelled up great big. He's, and he's got a, he cannot get it wet. So she says she don't know how she's going to give him a bath. I says, well, just hold his finger out of the water. So that's what she's going to have to do. But um, he's kind of sensitive to stuff like that. So, um, and I, I felt so sorry for him. I says, poor little guy, you know, <laughs> eight years old. And he's one of these kind that he doesn't like to have his fingers touched. If he's got an owie, as he calls it, he doesn't like to be touched there. You know, he doesn't like her to cut his fingernails or 
But he probably was biting something off and, and it got infected. And I thought, oh my gosh, that looks, you know, that'd be terrible. It was all wrapped up. She said it was really gross, you know. And she said that, um, I don't want to say it because I've got food. I'm not eating it. But anyway, she said pus was flying out at the doctor. It was that much, that bad. So he had a lot of pus under his cuticle. But uh, hopefully it'll get to feeling better in no time. So, um, see, this is hasn't started boiling yet, but I'm going to keep on stirring it. Once it starts boiling, then I'll simmer it for for uh, 25 minutes but I, I do appreciate everybody coming in here because I know you like like me to do new recipes and I love doing new recipes I'm always finding recipes in fact my daughter messaged me yesterday and she said and she gave me a new site that she was um, that she had found because she um, is a caretaker for her sister-in-law and she has to take care of her three days a week just a couple few hours a day and they were making Christmas cookies and they were trying to, um, she said she was Googling something, and that website came up. And the website, and I don't think, it, and I don't know if anybody's ever heard of it, it's called My Darling Vegan. She sent me the, the um, link to it, so I went on, went on it this morning, and they've got a lot of recipes on there. They've got the pumpkin butter on there, too. Um, hi, good to see you. Welcome. And I think that's where I got this recipe, was on My Darling Vegan. Either that or Pinterest, one of the two. Um, so I... I've been going on, going on there. I go on Pinterest. I go on all recipes. I've been yummy. I've been, I mean, I look at recipes. Of course, with Sabbath, I don't. But six days a week, I'm on going on there and looking for recipes. I just keep on going, and and uh, it's a, it's a lot of fun to look for new ideas to make new things because I'm one of these kind. I don't want to make the same thing over and over again. If I can find something new to make that I've never made before, that's what I want to do. So that's why I come in here and try to find something new to make for for you each and every day. It's not easy because I'll have several things picked out, and then I have to decide beside those several things if I want what I want to make. And then sometimes I choose I choose not to, and I'll find something else. Oh, well, it's starting to boil right now, so I'm going to put this down on simmer, and I'll set my thing my timer on my my um, thing for 25 minutes, and then I'll come and talk to you. All right, there we go. Since it's just simmering anyway, I'll bring it up. There we go. Now I'll, just, now, I'll just keep stirring it while I'm talking to you. But it is a lot of fun looking for new recipes. I love it because there are so many vegan recipes out there when you really stop and think about it. Of course, you have to tweak the recipes because no recipe is set in stone. You don't exactly have to use everything they say in there. Now, a lot of the recipes that I've seen lately call for cremini uh, mushrooms or shiitake or they call for apple cider vinegar. Well, either I make the recipes and don't put that stuff in there, or I skip them all together. Because I won't use I won't use shiitake mushrooms, cremini mushrooms, and I won't use apple cider vinegar either. If people knew what the, what the apple cider vinegar is, is a fermented. It tastes terrible anyway. I don't like it. Hi, Damon. Good to see you. Welcome. Um, I'm just stirring my. I'll show you my apple butter when it's done. But you have to be careful what you put in your body. You know. Uh, we we all have to be careful. Hi, good to see you. Welcome. Thank you for coming. Um, no, I don't. Because you are, you don't understand. We get our protein from our fruits and vegetables. You're welcome. We do. A lot of people say, well, vegans, you don't get your protein. Yes, we do. You can get them from the fruits and vegetables. Uh, that's where the fruit... Well, and, and when you think about it, that's what God gave us in the Garden of Eden. He gave us fruits and vegetables. Uh... <clears throat> Oh, oh, I think that's my daughter that just came in. <laughs> that's my daughter. Would everybody say hello to my daughter? Her name is Laura. She wanted to come into my pumpkin. I'm so, hi, sweetie. Good to see you. Thank you for coming in. Hi, Marilyn. Good to see you. Um, Laura, I wanted, I wanted to ask you, was that Christian or Tristan that had, because I was thinking it was Tristan that had the, the bad finger. Because um, uh, I, I couldn't tell. Is it Christian or Tristan? <laughs> Thank you, Marilyn, for coming in. I'm, I'm stirring my, my pumpkin butter, and as soon as it gets, if, as soon as it gets uh, done, now in 25 minutes, then I'll show you um, what it looks like. Well, you can see what it looks like now, but it's going to be. Um, oh, that's what I thought it was, Tristan. That's what I was telling everybody to pray for him. Um, those are just coming in. He had pus under his finger. He must have bit a nail, a hangnail, which I do that a lot too. Bit a hangnail off. And it, he got pus under his cuticle. 
when she had to take him to the doctor, and she said it looked awful. It was so bad that, that uh, you know, and poor kid, he doesn't like antibiotics. He doesn't like her to even cut his fingernails or anything like that. And I'm hoping that he, that she can hold his finger out of the water. <laughs> yeah, I hope he does too. I am doing just fine. How are you? Good to see you. Welcome. I am just so pleased that my daughter came in today. Um, yeah, they can. They can. Well, he he is one that's not, uh, um, he's intolerant of pain anyway. I think we all are. I don't like pain, and nobody does. But him being eight years old, you know, he's going to be, he, de he doesn't even like for her to <laughs> cut his nails. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome, sweetie. Um, so those just coming in, um, that's my daughter. I didn't think she'd ever come on Periscope. But I guess she decided she wants to see my, my vegan pumpkin butter. And uh, I appreciate you coming in there, sweetie. And just pump those hearts if you want to. You can just tap on the screen on the right-hand side, and it brings hearts up. If you know what, they, if they, people can tell you how to do it. You just tap on the screen on the right-hand side, and it, it puts hearts. There you go, just like that. puts hearts up on the screen. I thank everybody for coming in here and sharing this out because, uh, oh, Tammy did. Oh, she's, she probably watching me on Twitter, huh? Hi, good to see you. I didn't think you had, I didn't think you had Periscope on your phone anymore, but I'm glad you came in. You can come in more on my cooking scopes and, um, my daughter is not vegan and that's fine because she can, she can make this any way she wants. It's not set in stone, but, uh, she's been making pumpkin cookies. And uh, the Tammy that she's talking about is the woman that she takes care of. And I'm so proud of my daughter for taking care of her three days a week, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, for about two and a half to three hours a day, she takes care of her and helps her, you know, with anything that she needs, you know. Of course, she gets paid for it, but I'm so proud that she's doing her job and she's taking care of somebody. It feels good to, oh, through Twitter, okay. It feels good to be helping somebody that really needs help. You know, yesterday I had done a Periscope in the morning and I was really, really surprised. I had encouraged somebody on my, my scope that I had done yesterday morning when I, when I walked the dogs that was down and out and I didn't know they were. And they came out of my cooking scope yesterday and they said that I had encouraged them so much that they felt much better during the day. I don't know what their problem was, but I had encouraged everybody. So you never know when you, when you're, you're going on out and about your day. Anything that you say can be an encouragement to somebody else. It was, you know, and I felt really good to know that I had encouraged her. No, And I don't know how I encouraged her, but I was just, you know, kind to everybody and told her that life is too short. We all have to help each other. You know, and I'm so, like I said, I'm so proud of my daughter for, for helping, the, helping her sister-in-law out and taking care of her like she is because she, she needs to be taken care of. You know, she needs that help. And she's got other caretakers throughout the week when my daughter doesn't do it. So um, I'm so proud that she's that she's doing this. She's doing her part. Oh. Oh, I know. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Let me go back and let me scroll up and see if some of these, um, somebody has said, uh, I need prayers for a woman I know disappeared for 12 months. Oh my goodness, Damon. What is the woman's name? Because, um, we need to pray for her. Uh, they don't know where she's at at all. They have not, they don't even have an idea where she's at. Oh my goodness. That's terrible. Um, I hope she wasn't murdered. That would be terrible if she had been. I just hope she wasn't. Oh my goodness. Um, oh, missing in Malaysia. Oh my. Oh my. That's terrible. Oh, I hope she's found pretty soon. Can you imagine what her, fa her family's going through? Oh, she jumped out of an Uber. Oh my goodness. <laughs> uh, oh, really? In a retirement home? Oh my. Wow. i never seen again. Oh my goodness. Uh, uh, there's no roaches crawling. Oh, my goodness. Somebody's being... <laughs> no, there isn't no roaches. I don't have roaches. Oh, my goodness. Anyway, um, that's terrible. Somebody missing for 12 months and jumped out of an Uber? Why in the world would she jump out of an Uber? Oh, my goodness. Oh, man. Yeah, I'm going to have to block that person. Uh, let me see. Let me go back there. and Let me go back there and block that person. 
Let me go. There. I blocked that person. You can't talk like that anymore. There. There. Um. Oh, she was eating at KFC. Is she was seen at KFC? Well, at least she's probably alive. But the thing of it is, uh, uh, I don't even have my 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 uh, moderators on here now, so I'm gonna have to start blocking some of these people. My moderators come on; they'll take care of it. Um, I don't even have. I'm not even wearing a wig, so somebody's being mean. So you get these kind of mean, nasty people on here. Oh my goodness. Um, oh, I'm sure they are, Damon. Oh, you know, and they would be distraught. Now you're getting into the Christmas holiday season. They want her back for the Christmas holiday season. And the sad thing of it is, we don't know if she's ever going to be found again. Yeah, I know. Really rude. <laughs> I blocked them. Uh, yes, they are mean. They're very mean. But, you know, I take care of them. I give them the old boot, the old heave-ho, and they can't come back in here again. You know. And like I said, those pe people of you that... Even if you don't periscope, go into your profile and block the bots. Because if you don't, they're going to follow you everywhere you go. Um, yes, maple pumpkin butter. It's got maple syrup in it. Right now it's simmering for 25 minutes, and I'm stirring it occasionally. Um, oh, you missed the ingredients? Okay, I will tell you what they are. Two cans of pumpkin puree, uh, three-fourths of a cup of maple syrup, um, one half cup of apple, they call for apple cider. Since you can't get apple cider right now, they say you can use apple juice. So I went and got some apple juice and used that instead. Juice of a half of lemon. Um, so two, two teaspoons of ground cinnamon, but I use cardamom instead. One teaspoon of ground ginger, a half a teaspoon of ground cloves, an eighth of a teaspoon of ground nutmeg, and an eighth of a teaspoon of salt, and I use sea salt. That are the ingredients in this recipe. Um, it's very simple. And the reason I'm using a pot like this, the pot, I'm, you're welcome. The reason I'm using a soup pot is because they say you have to have a big enough pot because the pumpkin will um, bubble up. And if you don't have a big enough pot, it's going to get all over you. Probably repaint your kitchen and everything else. So I'm letting this simmer for 25 minutes. It's got, it's got, a little more, it's got almost 15 minutes to go yet. So I'm letting it simmer. I'm just, just stirring it occasionally. But if you make your own foods, at least you know what's in it. You don't have to worry. Now, what did I put in there? Because, you know, I'm one of these kind that when I go shopping and I want to buy something, the first thing I do is I turn the package over and I look at the ingredients inside, what the, uh, what the ingredients are. Because they have a long list of ingredients like that, and a lot of them are chemicals that you wouldn't even be able to pronounce. And like I said, if you can't put the chemicals, you know, if you can't pronounce them, don't put them in your body. So... I don't buy it if it's got a lot of ingredients. Now, a lot of stuff that I buy organic, you can have organic, maybe tomatoes in it, carrots and stuff like that. That's fine. I try to buy organic as much as possible. And if I can't buy organic, I do definitely, and I suggest you other do too, non-GMO, because you do not want the GMOs. Those can be those, you know, gen um, genetically modified organisms. Those, what those, that's what GMO are. You don't want those in your body either. So try to get non-GMO. That's what I do. I try to get organic and non-GMO if I can. But if you can't get one, you get the other. But you make sure that you know what it, what's in it and check it out because we don't want to put that harmful stuff in our body. There, you know, there are people who are so sick nowadays because of what they're eating. They're putting the wrong things in their body and then they wonder why they're sick. They go to the doctor. The doctor can't really help them. Oh, they give them some kind of medicine or whatever. And, you know, call me in the morning or whatever, you know. And they're just, they're just you know, um, exacerbating the problem. They're not really taking care of the problem. They're making a bigger problem by putting them on medication because sometimes you find out the medication will cause more symptoms to appear again. So, you know, it, it, it's, it's really a vicious cycle. Um, so if you, um, yeah, you're right. They are poison. Exactly. So you've got to be very careful. That's why I'm real careful about what I put in my body. That's why I'm getting to the point where I'm making a lot of things from scratch. I am having the best fun making things from scratch. I would be upset if I couldn't do this anymore. Because since I started this, I've, I'm, I mean, looking for recipes and coming on here has been has been the most fun, and that's why I'm doing this, because I'm having fun coming on here, showing you how you can live a little bit more healthy. 
Of course, I'm not forcing anybody to become vegan. That's not the point. I'm hoping that people will want to do this on their own. Once they see how I'm looking and how I'm, you know, how things are affecting me, how the vegan vegan lifestyle is affecting me, that they'll want to try it themselves. You know, you never know. I've got a couple in here that have already said they're vegan because of, of my periscopes. So it does work, but I'm not forcing anybody to become vegan. I just love coming in here, teaching you how to use Pampered Chef tools and teaching you how that you can live a little bit more healthy. We all need to be healthy. People don't understand that, that um, they're so sick because of what they put in their body. They don't pay attention to what the, chem what the things are they're putting in their body. They're, they put a lot of chemicals in their body, and they're not thinking twice about it. They'll put them in there, and, and you know something? It's the packaging that's enticing a lot of people. They've got, they have got uh, fancy packaging. I've noticed that a lot of the packaging on your things now are so fancy. They're colorful, and I think the manufacturers are doing that on purpose because they realize that once, that once you uh, buy that packaging, you're not going to pay attention to what's inside. You're going to, you're going to buy it because the packaging entices you. That's why they do it, just to, for fancy packaging. Well, it may look good, but is it good going down? It's harmful. They don't understand that. Um, yeah, it's, I've seen a lot of the things that some of the things I buy, the packaging is so fancy that they, they've changed. Oh, <laughs> Chewy, I don't know what he's barking at, something outside. But I've seen a lot of, I'm thinking, uh-oh, there you go. They're, they've changed the packaging. I know why they changed the packaging. They're trying to entice you to buy it. And unfortunately, a lot of people buy it because of the packaging. They don't look at the ingredients on the inside. They just buy it because that's, they're used to buying it and they've had it so, so long. Um, yeah, you're right. There is a lot of deceiving. You're, you're sure. You're, you're correct on that. Um, I, and they do it because they know that people aren't going to pay attention to the ingredients. And they don't, unfortunately. They won't read the ingredients. Um, yeah, that... They, they, the packaging is real colorful. They're starting to make them red, white, and blue now and different colors. You know, plain packaging doesn't entice a lot of people. So they'll go out and they'll, they'll look for the fanciest packaging they can find. But what are they getting? Are they getting a product loaded with a lot of chemicals? They're not checking the labels? You have to check the labels on your uh, the ingredient label to see exactly what it has in it. You've got to be diligent and do that. I do that all the time because I don't want to put the chemicals in my body. <clears throat> oh, good. See, chia, chia egg or, or flax egg work perfectly, make very good eggs. Um, and people don't need eggs to put in their cakes or pies or what have you. Just make a chia egg or flax egg and you've got it. They are a lot better for you. Healthy. I mean, chia, chia seeds alone have a lot of omega-3s in them. And I keep my chia seeds in the refrigerator because you're better off if you do. I keep the flax meal and the flax seeds in the freezer. That's better for, the, for them if they're in there too. Oh you, oh, you put it in the cookie you made? Absolutely. See, when you put healthy stuff in, the, in your food, then you're going to eat better. You're going to feel better. Because you know that you put in your body what is not going to harm you. That's why I come in here and I make the foods I make. Because I don't want to put anything in my body that's going to harm me. Uh, that's right. Coconut sugar is a lot better for you. It is, it is processed. But it goes through a lot less processing than your refined sugar does. Refined sugar is a complete no-no. I stay away from refined sugar completely. I use a lot of coconut sugar. Or I use cane sugar, which like I can say they're both processed, but a lot less processed than refined sugar. And brown sugar is just basically refined sugar with molasses in it. It's like Stacy said. So I kind of stay away from brown sugar if all possible. If you still want to use it, that's fine. But I'd rather use coconut sugar because it's the same color anyway. It's healthier for you. I get the, the coconut sugar I have is unrefined. And, that, and that's a lot better. It's organic and unrefined coconut sugar. I bought it at Walmart. It's a lot better for you. It's healthier, and you know what you're putting in your body. Stay away from refined sugars. I, You know, sugar is something that cancer loves, and it's going to breed cancer, really. And you don't want that. You don't want it to breed cancer. So stay away from things that, that cancer loves. As, as Leslie said, cancer hates it. you gotta, you got to know what your body can tolerate. 
you know, not everybody body's body can tolerate the same thing, unfortunately. It's because of the way, the way they've been brought up and they've been eating that, the, you know, the wrong way their whole life. You know something, when I started on this plant-based lifestyle, my body has been going through a lot of changes. Gradual. It hasn't been, uh, raw, you know, all at once, but it's been a gradual process to, to make it look like it is now. And I'm hoping to stay that way. I tell myself I cannot go back and eat what I was the way I was eating before. I was eating all the wrong foods. I was eating meat. I was eating the cheese. I was eating all the eggs. And I knew I couldn't, I shouldn't be doing that. Um, right, right, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, cacao powder um, is not good for you. I, I learned that too, the heart of, of, from Stacy. Because I had bought some cacao powder. Now I'm going to have to give it to somebody that made me want to use it. Donate a lot of stuff that I don't use anymore. So I use carob powder. I use carob powder. I use carob chips and anything that I make with chocolate. It's a lot healthier. Much, much better for you. Um, wonderful. That's exactly what you do. Start out slow. Don't do everything all at once. Um, Oh, good for you. Good for you. Yeah, Stacy's dog is on a completely vegetarian diet, too. Um, sometimes I'll give my dog something that I, in fact, I had some corn fritters yesterday for lunch, and I gave them what I had left. Oh, uh, I froze the good ones and what was messed up. I gave them to them this morning. They loved it. So I'll eventually make them vegans, too. Um, you know, it's not necessarily on a dog. But it's up to you, up to you if your pet's going to be a vegan or not. Um, I wanted to ask you in here, Stacy. Has have you found Sable yet? Has he come back? Because I've been so worried about him. I know that he's been your family pet, and you miss him terribly. Um, oh, he likes the brown rice and other green grains. Oh, okay. Brown, yep. Brown rice would probably be real good for him. Um, oh, he's not back. Do you know exactly where he went to? Do you suppose somebody may have found him and took him in their house? Because that's that was. The first thing I thought of when I saw that, that maybe somebody picked him up. If he's got a collar and a tag on him, you'd think that somebody would give him back to you. You know, play, pray for Stacy while she's in her. Her black cat, Sable, came up missing, and he's the family pet, along with Rocky, their, their uh, beagle dog. They are missing him terribly. We have to all pray that he comes home safe and sound, and that nothing happens to him. He gets killed, hit by a car, or anybody takes him, for that matter. Um... Oh, yeah, I know. I, yeah, I know you do. Oh. oh, my gosh. He won't go to anyone? Probably not. I hope he comes home, though, Stacy. And I, um, it's probably sad that he got out in the first place. Um, I, how, did he man how did he get away? Because I thought he was a house cat and he never went outside. How did he manage to get away? Did somebody open up, one of the kids open up the door and he ran out? Um yeah, that's what I'm wondering, if he could be hiding under the house. Well, I don't know if he'd be on the roof, but he could be hiding under the house. Um, you never know. So I look under, if you can, if you can hide under your house, Stacey, I would check to see if he's under there. Um, because you never know. He, he might have gotten scared and that might be in where he went, under the house. Shine a flashlight under there, if you can get under there and see if he's under there. You never know. And ask around the neighborhood to see if anybody's found him. You know, that I saw that, that he, um, we were in Tennessee. Curtis went to go check the mail. They, oh, they didn't see him. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my. Oh. Yeah. Uh, oh, he's not under the house. Well, I'm wondering if maybe food will, cat food will draw him back. If maybe Curtis sets out cat food on the porch or something, will that bring him back? It will draw him something to get him back because I know that you're missing him terribly. Because I know your periscopes, how he'd be in the bedroom, he'd be laying up on the dresser. He'd be right there by you. And to think that he's gone like that, that is sad. I know how you feel to lose an animal. My goodness, when I lost my dog, I was frantic. Um, um, possums, oh yeah, good grief. Yeah, yeah, that's right, possums. Oh, that's that's too bad, yeah. Well, they would eat it before he even thought about it, but... I keep thinking about him. I hope he comes back safe and sound. And I just hope he's not gone too far that he can't find his way back. Although cats do a better job of finding their way home than dogs do. Uh, 
uh, really, they're they're a lot better at at, at uh, finding their way around than dogs. Because I know <laughs> if dogs get lost, they don't find their way home very easily. So um, he he should find his home, find his way back home. I'm hoping and praying that he comes home to you before too too long. I mean, it's it's terrible to have to lose an animal. I mean, uh, you know, and I, I'm afraid. I hope he doesn't get killed. That's the worst of all. Um, yes, we need to pray. We need to pray that she gets her cat back safe and sound because oh yes i am too i've been praying about her i've been thinking about it and 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 also praying that he, he comes back safe and sound because nobody wants to lose their pet i mean when chewy gets out he goes and and wanders off i am frantic even though i know that he'll come back but i'm still frantic and the reason i am is because i don't want him getting to into the position where he'll get next to a pit bull and a pit bull will attack him because that pit bull will make a meal out of him, and that's what I'm afraid of. So I, I get, I go frantic when he's gone because I go looking for him right away. You know, he usually ends up in somebody's backyard, and how he gets in, he goes, he goes from fence to fence, he goes underneath them, digs holes, and goes from fence to fence, and that's how he gets there. Um, yes, they are, and we don't have any pit bulls in the neighborhood that I know of, but. Somebody could come along and, and get a pit bull, and then he'd be he'd be out of luck if somebody you know if the pit bull attacked him. But uh, the neighborhood here pretty much no Chewy, and if if he gets out and he gets over in their in their yard, they shoo him back home or bring him back home because they pretty much know who he is because he's been getting out so much. Uh, it's in my it's in my pan right now. It's almost um, oh, it's only just a few seconds left, so I'll put this down. Oh yeah, I, I know. There's my. This is what it looks like right now. It's, it's been simmering. And I'm going to have to put it in the, um, a jar. I can let's see if I can find a jar. Uh, yeah, here was one. I don't know if I fit in here or not. I can put it in here. I got other jars I might fit into, but anyway, I've got a jar that I can put it into. Um, see if this says any more. Okay, got a lot of cool 15 minutes for tanks to basin jar. Oh, yeah. I don't want to put it in there yet. Got to let it cool. And I'm going to, once it cools, I'll set it up on here. Okay, there it goes. All right. Let me go ahead and shut my thing off. All right. Now, I'll bring this back up here so you can see what's in. There we go. Now, there. Now you can see my pumpkin butter. I can hold it up close. See, there's where, that's what it is. I have to let it cool. And that's, and there it is, pumpkin butter. It's got a lot of good properties to it. I'm going to, uh, I know it's hot, but I'm going to see if I can get a spoon and just blow blow a little bit on it and taste it and see what it tastes like. Because I, like I like to taste my food. They say a good cook always tastes your food. Mm-hmm. Really good. This is different. This is really different. There, there's what it looks like. Doesn't that look good? And it will go into a jar. Um, so you can see that's what my pumpkin butter, I've got to let it cool off for a while. And i got to let it sit at room temperature even before I can put it in the refrigerator. Oh, I know. I'm going to put this on my toast tomorrow morning, you know. Uh, when I saw this recipe, I thought, pumpkin butter? I've never had pumpkin butter. But it was easy to make. It wasn't hard at all. It took a little time to get it simmered and everything, but it looks really good. And I know it's going to taste good on toast. Um, for those of you that were not in here when I made my chia jam, I made some blueberry chia jam. I am going to let you see what that. I put that on my toast every morning with peanut butter. All it is to die for. Let me show it to you. I keep it in the refrigerator in a sealed up container. There is my chia, my, my blueberry chia seed jam. Doesn't that look good? And it is absolutely wonderful. I posted this up on my Facebook group for those of you that may have not seen it. I, and I put the recipe up there too. So if you, want to, if you want the recipe, just go into my group and get the recipe. Oh, and this is luscious, man. It's really good. And it keeps, it says to keep it in a jar. Sealed in, and this jar, see these are real good. It's going to keep real well in here. And you keep it in the refrigerator at all times. Put it back. I am one of these kind that 
Whenever I see anything made with chia seeds, I jump on the recipe because chia seeds are so healthy for you, completely. And so are, so are your flax seeds. And now Stacy, I know she's got some flax meal, and she or, or she buys flax seeds. Now I've got flax seeds too, where I can grind them up and make flax meal out of it too. Um, um, dry. Well, I think they kind of go rancid. It's better to keep them in the refrigerator. And I've got a jar of them in the refrigerator uh, that they came in. They're organic. I keep them in the refrigerator because it's a lot better. For, and my my. Uh, Flax seeds, I bought some flax seeds a while back. I keep them in the freezer, and the flax meal is up there, too. Um, oh, yeah, it gets too hot. You know, you, you probably have to throw them away. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's best to keep them in the, in the refrigerator or freezer, whatever, you know, how, because it's better for it, because they'll go rancid. And I found out that nuts do the same thing. It's best to keep them in the freezer, too, like your walnuts, your pecans, and your... Um, well, almonds, any nuts like that. Keep them in a sealed jar or keep them in the freezer, refrigerator, or whatever, because they'll go rancid too. Uh, oh, you put yours in the refrigerator? Okay, good. Um, it sure is. Yes, it is. I've got one. I've got my 12-inch skillet coming from Pampered Chef, and I don't know when it's going to get here. Um, either today or tomorrow. It hasn't come yet, so I don't know. I'm, I'm waiting on it to get here. Alexis thought it would be here on the weekend, but it hasn't come yet. So <laughs> I'm going to have to inform her I haven't got it yet. But it's coming from Illinois. So it's almost like it's coming Turtle Express. Since I live in Oregon, it's going to take a lot longer to get here. Usually it takes a week or more to get here. So um, how long can they stay? Your chia, your your um, seeds like that, your your um, uh, black seeds and that, there is no no limited time. They can stay in the freezer for however long you you have them in there. There don't no 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 problem with because they don't freeze, but they just keep keep in the freezer better. Um, oh yes, we must do that. But your chi, but uh, if uh, so, I I try to do that. But they will they're they're um, they will keep indefinitely. So you don't have to worry about that. Anything you put in the freezer, you know, will keep a lot better than keeping it out anyway. But that's what I do when I get my chia seeds right away when they're open. If they're not open, I don't worry about it. But once I open them, I put them right away in the refrigerator. I put my flax seeds, because I had bought some flax seeds a while back and uh, at the store I used to shop at that's got bulk. And I, I put them in a glass container and I put them in the freezer. And if I want grind to, uh, I need flax meal, I'll just take some out and grind it up. And it works really well that way, you know. It's better to buy buy the flax seeds whole, raw, and then just grind them yourself. Although I I do buy flax meal, I when I uh, I do it in a pinch, especially if I don't want to take the time to grind the flax seeds. So I'll I'll buy the flax meal so I have it in a pinch. But they're both good. Flax meal makes a good chia egg or makes <laughs> makes a good egg, and so does your chia seeds. Both, they're healthier for you. You know. <clears throat> That's because I don't eat eggs anymore. It took me a long time to get used to not eating eggs because I love eggs. But I never ate them all that much anyway. And now that I don't eat them at all, I'm, I'm not even concerned about it. I just walk away from the eggs. You know, I figure, well, I can make a chia egg or make a flax egg. And it's, it's the same as a substitute. Now, when I make tofu scramble, it looks like scrambled eggs. Um, tofu itself does not have a flavor. But when you start adding, like... Um, your seasonings to it, like maybe garlic salt, garlic powder, onion salt or onion powder, even onions to it, or put uh, put some of your um, peppers into it, it gives it a good flavor. Um, you can only, oh, call have fresh eggs or not at all. Oh, well, um, I just, uh, yeah, it's hard to know when the eggs they have in the store. I mean, I used to buy, uh, and I, <laughs> I wish now I hadn't done that, but I used to buy eggs by the dozen, you know, well, I, one time I bought five dozen eggs because I'd, I'd eat them two or three times a week. But then I thought, well, what am I doing to this to myself for? I don't need to be doing this. So finally I decided, nope, I'm not doing it anymore. So I completely got away from it. You know, it was hard because I was so used to eating eggs. I was so, uh, so used to eating cheese and the meat and stuff to have to finally give it up cold turkey. I don't recommend you giving it up all at once, but I did. Uh, oh, she... <clears throat> oh, she does. Organic. I try to buy organic as much as I can. It's better for you. Um, oh, you have fresh eggs when you go there. 
Um, I'm not going to tell you to, to, to uh, stop eating eggs. That's totally up to you. I know for me, I'm not going to eat eggs anymore. I don't, I don't think that there's proper. I don't, I don't want to eat them, but I'm not going to tell anybody else. Now, my son still eats eggs. My family still eats eggs. I'm the only one in the family that doesn't eat eggs. Now, they don't eat meat, but they will eat eggs. They eat cheese. You know, so they, my son says it's so hard for him to give his cheese up. And he knows he needs to give it up. He knows it's not good. It's, it is hard. When you're used to eating something your whole life, and then all of a sudden you don't eat it anymore. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> you know, I, I was so in tune with eating eggs and eating cheese that I eat them all the time. But once I've given them up, I buy vegan cheese now or I make my own cheese. I can make my own a sliceable cheese. I make my own cheese sauce that melts. I, I make my own. It's a lot better. It's a lot healthier. I know exactly what I put into it. And I don't have to worry about having harsh ingredients in it. A little cheese sauce I've made in the past, I've made it on here, has carrots and potatoes in it. Real good cheese sauce. I haven't made it in a while, though. I'll have to get getting back to making it. But here lately, I've been rather making anything anything else I can find. Now, the corn fritters I had yesterday for lunch, they were delicious. I had six of them that were real good. So I took and ate two of them. The rest of the other four, I went and froze them up. So I can have them any anytime I want. Just take them out of the freezer and, you know, thaw them out and eat them. But they were so good on a on a bun with, a, with a, you know, the day of cheese, American cheese slices. It was delicious. <laughs> There, that's good. Let me see what you said. I didn't, I met, missed some of it. Wonderful. That's the best thing for you. I am the same way. I don't eat chicken either. And I ate a lot of chicken um, growing up. I ate a lot of tur turkey, a lot of beef. Um, that's right. He doesn't. He doesn't want us to. He did create the animals. But actually, the animals are for the environment. That's what he created them for, to help with the environment. He didn't create them to be killed by humans, slaughtered, and put up on, put in the grocery store shelves and people eat them. Because if people realized what that animal went through for them to eat it, they would not want to eat it. I mean, I cry, actually, when I see the meat in the store shelves, you know, meat, meat counter. I cry because I, I realize what that animal went through. They suffered severely so that we could have we could have food on the table. And I thought, you don't need it. You know, they're, oh, sure, there's organic meat out there. But that's the same thing. You're still eating meat. It doesn't matter. It's still, or, it's still meat. Um, that's right. He did not create them for human consumption. You're right. He gave, them, he gave the animals to Adam to, for Adam to name, and he did name all the animals. But that's right. He did not give them for human consumption. He gave them for the environment. But people have decided that they're going to slaughter them and they're going to put them on our table. And they don't need to do that, you know. Um, yes, it does. You're exactly right. It makes God happy. This world would be a lot less sick people in it if they would just stop and think before they put anything in their mouth. Check to see what you're putting in your mouth first and say, tell yourself, and ask yourself, do I need this? Should I be putting this in my mouth? And if your answer is no, then don't put it in your mouth. A lot of people don't ask themselves that. They, they just go ahead and eat it. But you need to stop and think before you put anything in your mouth. What is that going to do to my system? It, like I said, it may taste good going down, but it's the after effects. It can affect you terribly. It can give you a nice belly ache. You know, you can get sick from it. Why put yourself through that? It doesn't make sense. Don't put things in your body that are harmful. Put only good things in your body. Your your because your body, when you think about it, your body is the temple of God. The Bible talks about that. Your body being the temple of God. God will destroy your body if you destroy it. So you don't want to destroy your body. But unfortunately, a lot of people are destroying their body every day by eating the foods that they're eating. It's unfortunate, but it's true. I hate to say that. I don't like the fact that that's happening. But it is happening. That they're destroying their body. And they need to stop des destroying their body. They need to get back to... to um, Yeah, smoking is another one. Smoking and drinking alcohol. 
Those two are, are a detriment to your body too. That people don't understand that. They smoke like crazy. That I don't know, they'll smoke a pack or two of cigarettes a day because it's a habit. And they say habits are hard to break. Well, it shouldn't have been a habit they got into in the first place. If you don't start smoking, you're not going to miss it. I have not picked up one cigarette in my entire life, and I don't intend to. That stuff makes me gag just to look at it. And then you know something? If you breathe in that secondhand smoke, it's more harmful than if you're smoking it right directly. I've heard that. The secondhand smoke can get to you a lot more than if you just, uh, if you, um, than, than just smoking the cigarette directly. Um, your, da your dad smokes cigars. I bet that smell is horrible, too. <laughs> Oh, yes, it is. Smoking is very bad. It is really bad. You know, if they didn't make um, cigarettes, people wouldn't be buying them. But unfortunately, they do. They make cigarettes, so people will go ahead and, and buy them. You know, nicotine. They have what they call a nicotine fit. They they think they, they I guess it gives them a high, I so suppose, like drugs. To me, I consider a cigarette a drug because it gives them a high. You know, they can't they can't leave them alone. Um, yeah, I bet it does. Yeah, bet, that's right. Makes their teeth all black, too. Uh, yeah, I agree. I agree they should be outlawed. That's the very thing I was thinking about, too. But unfortunately, they're not going to outlaw it because it's been around so darn long that people buy them and, and people would complain if they outlawed them. Uh, yeah, I, sh I, yes, I agree they should be illegal. But unfortunately, that'll never happen, you know. It'd take a miracle if it ever happened. <laughs> Unfortunately, it won't. Um, no, he sure doesn't. He does not approve of cigarettes. He does not approve of alcohol either. And people that do a lot of drinking, wine, any kind of other spirits or whatever, you know, they have they, they get too tipsy and they don't act themselves. And I'll tell you this. I don't think I've ever, ever mentioned this in, before. But when I was a, young, a teenager, I drank. And I am not proud of it. I am not proud of it because I got drunk once. And all it took was one time. And that cured me. Because it made me sick. And I never touched it again. And I won't. You know, it just takes one time. But when, when you know, teenagers, they don't know any better. You know, you ha you're out with your friends. And I was. I was out with my friends. And we were having a gay time. But the problem of it was, they kept giving me alcohol. Stuff that... I shouldn't be, uh, that I that I didn't realize was that bad for me, and it got me stone drunk. And I don't even know how I got home. Somebody brought me home, I guess. That's what they told me, that somebody had brought me home. Yeah, peer pressure, you're right. But that, the, um, and my dad did not know I had been drunk because I was smarting off to him. And I, you know, when you're drunk, you say and do the craziest things. I smarted off to him, and he didn't realize I was drunk. But um, he said the next morning, he kind of figured it out. But, uh. He wished he'd have known it then because he said he would have slapped me. Probably would have slapped me senseless, but he did not realize then. But I, you know, I, I realized after that I shouldn't have been touching that stuff. That was that was it. No more for me. I never got drunk after that. I may have drank a little bit, but I didn't. I didn't get drunk. But now I don't drink anything at all because I know it's harmful. I want nothing to do with it, and that stuff tastes horrible. Ugh, you know. Who wants that flavor, that taste of that stuff? Yuck, it's no good. I don't want it in my body. You know, and just the fact that it tastes horrible is enough to, to, to steer me away from it. You'd think it would steer a lot of people away from it, but it doesn't. You know, they love their wine. They love their whiskey. They love their beer. You know, and I see people in the grocery store in Walmart that'll buy a whole bunch of cartons of beer. Um, oh, no, it's not. No, it's not. When you, wine is not healthy. When you're, you're, you're thinking probably of the uh, wedding in Cana in the Bible. That was not actual wine. That was grape juice. He turned the water into wine. That was actually grape juice. He used the word wine in the Bible, but that's exactly what grape juice is, is unfermented wine. He did not, he, God would never have made that into actual wine to get them drunk. He would not have done that because he's against alcohol. See, it was grape juice. So wine is not healthy, no. And if somebody tells you that it's healthy, it's not. They say it's good for medicinal purposes. Well, I don't agree with that. You shouldn't have any of it. It's better off not to. You know, drink water. Drink drink water or drink fruit juice. Don't drink your, your alcohol of any kind. It's better off if you don't. 
It's not, it's not good for your body. God abhors it. And you don't want to do that to yourself. If you realize what it does to you, you know, you take it from me. After being drunk once, you know, I'll never go back and, and drink ever again. I mean, that cured me. It just takes one time. There are people get drunk every day of the week, some people. But do you think it would cure them of it? No. They love going out and getting drunk. The drunker they are, the better. But the problem of it is, these drunk people, they act so crazy. They don't know what they're saying. They don't know what they're doing. And and their family doesn't know how to treat treat them either. Um, yes, that's right. It can, it can breed cancer. That's another thing. You don't want to drink alcohol. If you don't want cancer, don't drink alcohol. Because you're going to get cancer from alcohol. So that's a that's a warning here and now. If you if you love your alcohol and you um and you you keep drinking it, you'll get cancer. So don't do that to yourself. Cancer is a horrible horrible disease. So many people dying from it unnecessarily because of what they're doing to their bodies, and it's not right. Um. Oh my goodness, that see that's terrible, right? Yep, got cancer. It's terrible. They just don't understand what they're doing to themselves. They think it's okay, but it's not. It is not okay. Don't ever put yourself through that. Do what you're supposed to do and stay away from the bad stuff. Have all good stuff like this. This is very good. This this pumpkin butter, look at it. This is going to be good stuff. Put that on toast. See what that looks like. Um, it's, uh, drink scotch and smoke cigars. Well, you got the two together and that's not very good. It's not good at all. Just, just pray for him. Hopefully he'll he'll stop drinking and he'll stop smoking because it's not doing he's not doing his body any good. He's harming himself, but he doesn't realize it. You know, it it takes something a tragedy maybe to to wake him up. You know. Oh, he's an atheist. Well, <laughs> you have to pray for him all the way around. You know, see he doesn't think he's doing anything wrong. Even Christians the, the smoke and drink. They don't think they're doing anything wrong. That's the sad thing. So he doesn't really have to be an atheist to be doing it because they all they all feel the same way. So we're all going to pray for him, you know. Hopefully, hopefully that he'll change his attitude and stop smoking and drinking. Anyway, I think I'm going to go ahead now because I've got some dishes I have to do again. Um, I want to get off of here and, and clean up my kitchen a little bit and um, do a little bit of organizing. Um, I may do a, I won't do a cooking scope tomorrow, but I may do a walking scope tomorrow. Um, oh, there, my daughter came back. Yeah. Hi, sweetie. I'm glad you came back. Um, oh, smokers can't sleep. I suppose not. They probably can't, you know, they don't, they, they, they can't sleep, but at least I'll say one thing for my children. Um, they, my, my children, neither one of them, I've got a son and a daughter, my daughter's in here, my, my son doesn't come on Periscope, but he does, he's an elder of the church, he doesn't smoke and he doesn't drink, neither one of them do that, and I'm so thankful for that, I brought them kids up right, they never went into drugs either, um, yeah. <laughs> oh, well, I don't have a cleaning lady, I'm the cleaning lady, <laughs> I don't have anybody hired, you know, I don't, I don't do stuff like that. I'm the cleaning lady. <laughs> I have to take care of it myself, you know. But I just wanted to show everybody that you can make this pumpkin butter yourself. Now, my daughter's probably going to want to make it now that I've made it. It's real simple. I mean, look what it looks like. Doesn't that look nice? I'll put that on my toast in the morning. And I've already tasted it, and it's delicious. It's really good. I mean, it's nice and sweet. It doesn't have any sugar in it. It's got your maple syrup in it, and it's got a good flavor. And that's why it's called maple and and uh, pump, ma maple pumpkin butter. Uh, what's in it? Okay, I'll tell you what's in it. Um, two cans of pumpkin puree, one half cup of, of a three quarter cup of maple syrup, um, one half cup of, they call for apple cider, but I, since I didn't have apple cider and couldn't find any, they said you can substitute for apples or um, apple juice. So I got some apple juice and used that. Um, juice of a half a lemon. So I bought a lemon and then just cut it in half and juice half of it. Two teaspoons of ground cinnamon. I don't use cinnamon. I use cardamom. Cardamom is a very good, um, substitute for cinnamon when you don't eat cinnamon. Um, one teaspoon of ground ginger, um, which is very healthy for you. One eighth teaspoon of ground, uh, one, ha yeah, one half teaspoon of ground cloves, an eighth of a teaspoon of ground nutmeg, and an eighth of a teaspoon of salt. And I put sea salt in it. Um, why no cinnamon? Cinnamon is very harsh on you. Have you ever heard of that cinnamon challenge 
where they would put cinnamon on a spoon, <coughs> cinnamon on a spoon, and then have a challenge and see how much they could <coughs> they could take down. You try to take put cinnamon on a spoon, and oh, you're welcome. Put cinnamon on a spoon and then take it by itself. Oh man, it's harmful. You don't want to do that. Cinnamon is real harsh, as I understand. You have to do some research on it. But cardamom is similar to cinnamon in the fact that it's the same, almost the same properties. It works just as well. Um, and it's a very good um, spice. I bought it at, Wal at Walmart. So when I realized you could, you could um, substitute cardamom for cinnamon, I've been doing that ever since. Um, oh, apple cider vinegar. I don't like the taste of it anyway. I don't care for apple cider vinegar to begin with. Um, they have organic apple cider vinegar, but I still don't like it. But this, this called for actual apple cider. Well, you can only get it at certain times of year anyway. Since Walmart didn't have apple cider, I thought, well, I'll have to get apple juice. Uh, oh, here near India. Okay. But I'm, I try to keep my spices on hand whenever I need them. And I'm using a lot of them up, you know, as, as with all the recipes I've been making lately, I've I'm always using up my spices, and we need to we need to do that. Uh, yes, we have a Trader Joe's and a Whole Foods here. Um, I have not been to either one. I know where they both are. Trader Joe's is a little easier to get to than Whole Foods. The next time I take my dogs to get groomed, I probably sometime in January I probably will go to Trader Joe's then because it's on the same street. It's just a little ways down. It's in a shopping center. My daughter would know where the shopping center is at because she used to live here. Um, the Trader Joe's is in there in the Oakwood Shop Shopping Center. Whole Foods is a little bit harder to get to because it's off of Broadway, and I don't like going down that way. It's downtown Eugene, so I don't like going down there. But um, I'm going to try Trader Joe's. Um, oh, it's late. It's, I bet it is. <laughs> and, you know, this being the Christmas season, oh, my goodness, it's even going to get worse. I mean, Walmart's getting to be like a zoo now. It's hard to find a place to park. You know, I thought I wasn't going to find a place to park when I went this morning because I had to get some stuff for this recipe. Plus, I wanted to get some gift cards to send out to my grandchildren. Um, and it, it, it's, it's trying to fight over a parking spot. And people do. They'll fight over a stupid parking spot. You know, if you don't get there first, they're going to take it. You know, my daughter knows how that is because she's had that happen to her. It, it, so I would rather not fight the traffic. You know, I've got to get out uh, by Christmas Eve to get some... Um, money out for my son and daughter-in-law and the grandkids and yeah right you're probably true i got so i my daughter says well why don't you go on friday before and that's probably what i'll do i'll go next friday and get go to the bank then instead of waiting christmas eve because i know it's going to be a nightmare that place is going to be like a zoo I'm not going to find a place to park the bank doesn't have a big parking lot anyway so it's going to be hard to find a place to park then um Oh, you have a lot? Oh, a lot of Aldi's? Oh, yes, I've heard of Aldi's, yes. Um, we don't have an Aldi's here. Aldi's um, is back in the um, Midwest. Like, when I lived in Indiana, we had an Aldi's there. Um, we don't have that here. We do have a Sam's Club. We do have a uh, Costco. So, um, and I don't have a Costco card. But uh, Sam's Club and Costco, I think, are owned by the same person anyway. Um, so Costco is, I used to have a Costco card, but I don't have it anymore because you know stuff, something, all that stuff they have in there, it's pretty high, even, even though you're, you're paying a, a, a fee, you know, it's awful high. You go to Safeway, uh, Safeway can be high too. Oh my goodness. I've been to Safeway. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know you have to buy too much to, uh, pay for your yearly fee that and i think it's about 60 65 dollars or something now a year that's way up there so that's a little bit much um sometimes not very often but sometimes my son and daughter-in-law they're going to costco and they'll ask me if i need anything at costco and i can go along and then i just get it on her card of course i pay for it but I use her card to get it so that works that way too because there's no sense in me having a card for costco if they're going to be going there anyway um <clears throat> oh, you worked at Costco for 33 years? Wow. My grandson, uh, my daughter's oldest son, he works at Costco. He loves Costco. Um, he gets paid pretty well there, too. Um, and I'm proud of him that he's got a job. He's starting to drive now. 
He's finally driving. It took him a long time before he started driving, but he's driving now. And he's working at Costco. In fact, he's got two jobs. Um, so, um, oh, oh, you, Safeway's where you worked. Okay. Um, we have, yes, I have. I do that at Walmart sometimes. Only if I have just a very few items. But if I have a cart full, no, I don't go to the self-checkout. But I have used the self-checkout at Walmart, Yes. I have. It does save time, especially if I'm in a hurry and I need to get out and there's a lot of people there, I will go to the self-checkout and, you know, I don't really like them that well because sometimes they have problems with them and I can't quite figure out how to do it, but that's why somebody's there to help you if you need help. I'd rather they, you know, check me out and get it done. But like I said, you, you, it, it is faster. If I need to get through the line quick, that's what I'll do, go to self-checkout. One or two items, it doesn't pay to go to the other checkout. Go do it yourself. You get it out and out quicker. I had a little bit more today than just a little bit. So, oh, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah. Is that Kroger's you scan? Um, we have a Kroger's here. It's a Fred Meyer, and a Kroger's bought them out. Um, Yeah, that probably, that's true. We have a Fred Meyer here. Hi, Vanita, good to see you. You finally made it in, I see. Um, we haven't, haven't had too much problem with, with uh, bot. I did have to block a couple of trolls. But, uh, hi, good to see you. Here's my, here's my pumpkin butter, Vanita. Um, there's what my pumpkin butter looks like. Isn't that, look? doesn't that look good? Um, I don't know if my daughter is still in here, Vanita, but my daughter's in here and um, her name is, uh, her Nick is Dark Fixie. So, um, uh, yeah, it is. I'll put it in a jar. Um, her name is Laura. So wish her, uh, um, say hi to her because, uh, she needs, uh, to be, uh, have people say hi to her. Here they, oh, so scan. Oh, yes. They're starting to do that in some of the foreign countries. Now, Sweden, they use their phone, um, to, uh, there's my daughter, Benita. She just said hi there. That's my daughter. Her name is Laura. Ah, oh, yeah, see, they're, they're saying hi to you. Yep, that's my daughter. Um, she's coming in through Twitter. She's not coming in through Periscope. She's coming in through Twitter. The, the lady that she takes care of, um, she does a um, caretaker for, told her I was on Periscope because she comes through Twitter and watches me. So my daughter decided to come on Twitter and watch me too. Uh, yep, that's right. Say, uh, yeah, say hi to my daughter. She's a, this is the first time she's ever been in one of my periscopes, and I'm really happy to see her here. And I'm, I'm here because of her. You know, she wants she wanted to see me do a periscope, and uh, uh, and so everybody say hi to Laura. She <laughs> and I want you to pray for her for my eight year old grand eight year old grandson. Um, where does she live? She lives in Missouri. Um, she lives in Missouri. Um, yeah, she's uh, she's her sister-in-law Tammy saw me saw me on here. Um, oh, oh, thank you. Um, yeah, Tammy is the one that that saw her come, saw me come in here. Tammy, I wish Tammy would come in here too, but she doesn't. But anyway, those that just came on, Vanita, I want you to pray for my eight-year-old grandson. He has got, got a finger that's infected with pus. My daughter had to pick him up from school. She had to take him to the doctor. He had gotten pus under his cuticle. And I guess it was so bad that the pus was shooting out at the doctor. And he has to have it all bandaged up. He can't get it wet. So she says to me, she says, well, how am I going to give him a bath? I says, well, the best way to give him a bath is hold his, hand, hold his finger up out of the water. And he's a little baby. He doesn't like having his fingernails clipped and stuff like that. Um... Oh, she's been here for a while. I Okay, good. Um <laughs> Oh, I I appreciate that. I'm not I'm not as good as Alexis is, you know, but I <laughs> I appreciate. Well, tell Tammy, Laura, tell Tammy to come in and say hi because I want to say hi to her. I haven't said hi to her. If she's in here, tell her to say hi. Um, oh, 
Thank you so much. I appreciate that. I appreciate all the love. I'm only here because of you guys, because you show me the love and support each and every day. You know, you're here for me, and that's why I'm here for you. Uh, okay. Oh, and almond milk. Um, yeah. Well, if if she's if she's on Twitter, let her know I want to talk. I want to say hi to her. So so have her take. So have her say hi on the screen so I can say hi to her. Oh, not sure she is now. Oh, okay. All right, sweetie, that's okay. I was hoping that she would be on there so I could say hi to her. <laughs> oh, you just got off the phone with her? Oh, okay. You told her about Tristan? Aw. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yes, I do. Um, did you talk to her about Tristan and tell her what happened to his finger, or did she already know? Because I, I know she'd be concerned, too, you know. Uh, I'm so concerned. Um, oh, good. Yeah, I figured you would. Um, I'm hoping and praying, and you guys pray for me. I'm hoping and praying that I can go back and see my daughter next summer. I haven't seen her, would you believe, it's been 10 years since, since she left here in Oregon and she's in Missouri. I haven't seen her in 10 years. I'll tell you, that'd be a reunion of reunions. It really would. Yes, it's been that long. I hope to go back and see her next summer, around June, July, and spend a week or two with her and the boys. Um, and, you know, I talk about Tristan, but you know something? He was born in another state. So I've never, I've never seen him in person. I've only seen him on FaceTime, you know, and that's the only place I've seen him. I've not seen him in person. I have seen Christian, his older brother, because he was born here. Uh, she or he was born and she not he was born not here but she lived here when he was when he was about a year or two old but i haven't seen him in person so i've only seen him on facetime so i'm hoping to go back and see her well we've been separated because of distance i haven't been able to uh, to go back to see her and she sure can't come to see me so um yeah i do too i do too um Oh, see, they're telling, see, they're, Laura, they're helping you out. They're telling you baths and not showers. Well, I don't think Tristan likes showers anyway. His older brother, 12-year-old brother, will take showers, but not Tristan. Tristan is in a bath. So that, um, can I get there by train? Yeah, I can get there by train. I can also take a plane. So I haven't decided yet how to go. Um, oh, yes, just... Take his finger, Laura, and hold it up out of the water. I don't know if he's going to let you do that, but just tell him to keep his finger out of the water. Um, <laughs> that's going to be hard for him to do. And he loves playing on stuff, so I don't know. <laughs> I can just say, I can just hear him now, you know. Oh, my finger hurts. I can just hear him. You know? <laughs> but I love the little guy. You know, I really love him to pieces. Um, oh, you're traveling by train. You're traveling 500 miles by train next week. Um, oh, cool. You know, I, you know, that's another thing. I can, I can check, I can check both airlines and train fare. I know trains will be a lot cheaper. However, it takes a little longer to get there. It takes a few days to get there by train or plane. You get there the same day. So that's the only difference. But I can check both to see what would be the cheapest. Because, you know, I know the train is going to be cheapest, but it's, it's the time. Is being on the train and traveling several days. <laughs> no, I never have. Um, uh, I can use it on toast. I'll put it on toast in the morning for breakfast because I've got my chia seed jam and I've got peanut butter and I'll put it on there. Uh, <laughs> Oh, you! Oh, uh, I've never been. I've never fl uh, been on a, tr a train first class. It's only been coach, and my daughter can attest to that. We've only. Um, <laughs> my daughter. My daughter knows what it's like to be on a train. We've been on a train uh, uh, two or three. Wasn't it two a couple days? We went to Chicago. It was. It was a co couple days. It was re a really long time. We were on the train a long time from Chicago to. Um, I don't remember where we went to. Was it California? I think it was. Didn't we go to Oakland? We went on train, went to train to Oakland, and then we flew from Oakland to Hawaii. That's when we moved to Hawaii. Um, what a job that was. <laughs> uh, we were in Hawaii about a year and a half. Yeah, it was crazy. We got tired of being on the on the train. I tell you, I I don't mind planes, but I'll tell you this. My son, he just come back from Israel. 
Um, yeah, or, that's right, Oregon, Indiana, that's right. My son just came back from Israel last, last Sabbath. He flew 16,000 miles, 40 hours of flight time, and 9 hours layover, and that's round trip. That is a lot of miles, and 10 planes. So you can so you can understand he was very very tired and had a lot of jet lag when he got home. That is a lot of miles, but you know he said he would do it again in a heartbeat because he didn't get to see everything he wanted to see. Simply because the women there, he was in a group of 52 people and the women there wanted to go shopping and my son thought thought to himself he says, "Well, we're not here to go shopping." So <laughs> Yeah, that that is a lot. 16,000 miles. Well, you take it he had a flight from from Portland to Boston, which was a four-hour flight, and then from Boston to Istanbul was nine hours. And that was probably 4,500, 5,000 miles. So you can imagine there was a, quite a few miles distance there. So he he said he would do it again in a heartbeat, but he was going to spend more time there because, I mean, he actually got to walk the streets that Jesus walked on, got to see the sights that Jesus, you know, he saw where he was born. He got to see where he died. He got to see the tomb. Um, he saw the, uh, the pool of Beth, uh, Bethsaida, I think it was. Um, uh, no, they sure don't. I can attest to that. When I was married to, uh, to Laura's dad, he didn't like shopping one bit. Most of the time he didn't go with me. I'd take, I'd take the kids and I'd go shopping. He did not like shopping, which was fine with me. And if he did go shopping, he'd always be... Hurry up, hurry up, I want to get home. That's the way he was. He wanted to get home. He did not want to spend a lot of time shopping. You know, <laughs> of course, now that he's got a girlfriend, he probably loves to shop. He just didn't want to shop with me. Go figure, you know. <laughs> it's funny, but I, I mean, I love to shop, but I don't want to spend hours doing it either because I come home and my back feels like two cents. It hurts like a, like a son of a gun. So I have to sit down in my chair and relax. And my daughter can attest to that. She has back problems too. Her back hurts her if she's been standing up a long time, which she does for Tammy. She does a lot of work for her. She stands up and she has to get her her breakfast. She has to help her bathe and things like that and help her on the toilet. So she really does a lot. But by the time she gets home, she is dead tired. Then she hasn't got very long. She has to get lunch on for her and her husband, and then she's got to take him to work. And then by the time she gets back from taking him to work, then the boys come home from school. She really has much, no much time for herself at all. So she does cherish the time that she does get. She talks to, when she talks to me in the mornings every morning, that's the good time that she has because he's, he's in his com room doing the computer and the kids are at school and we talk for about an hour and a half every morning. Sabbath, Sabbath I call her after I get home from church. Uh, yeah, I know. It is a busy schedule. Yes, I'm sure. But I'm so proud of, of you for, for being able to take the initiative to help her like that because she needs help. You know, she can't do a lot of things on her own. Right? And she has to be in a wheelchair when she go, when they go out. She has to be in a wheelchair, you know, or a scooter. So being able to help somebody. And I, a few years ago, I think it was 2015, I think it was, um, Oh, I forgot to turn my element off. Um, to, I think it was 2015, um, I helped a lady from the church. The pastor had called me because she lived not far from me. He asked me to help help her get on the bus because we have what we call here ride stores. And she needed somebody to help her get on and off the bus because she had a wheelchair at that time. So I said, sure, I'd be glad to help her. So I'd have to wheel her to her appointments, her doctor appointments, and make sure she got back home. But I'll tell you one thing, trying to get her out of that wheelchair into her easy chair was nothing but dead weight. I could not lift her on my own. We had to call the paramedics to help get her out of that wheelchair and put her in her easy chair. But you know something now? She walks just like you, I do and you do. She just uses her walker when she has a lot of stuff that she brings to church. But she walks real good now. She looks real good. It's amazing what a few years has done for her. But I was real happy that I could help out because I know that I was blessed by helping her and she was blessed by having me help her because I helped her get around where she, she couldn't do it on her own. Um, yes, it does. It does. It most certainly does. It does take a special person. And they're real close. They talk all the time. And she doesn't trust anybody else to help her. Of course, she's got other, other um, daycare workers besides my daughter. 
but uh, the rest of the week. But she trusts she trusts her a lot more than she does the other ones because she'll do her job. Um, uh, surgery. Oh, what do you? What'd you ask? Um, why was she in a wheelchair? Um, I really don't know why she was in a wheelchair. Uh, she just couldn't walk very well. She had a lot of problems, but now she, um, she is she is real healthy. Like I said, she walks. She she'll walk up to for the altar call every Sabbath. But she does have a, she does have a walker, and she'll put she uses her walker when she has a lot of things to bring to church. So she used her walker then, but she can walk just like you and I now. And she's in a, um, she's in her late seventies, I think it is, close to eighty. So she's doing really, really well. She got well. She was sure glad to get rid of that wheelchair, I'll tell you. <laughs> but but after having taken care of her and seeing her every Sabbath on her like that, I'm really pleased that she's doing so well. I told her that I'm happy that she's doing a lot better because it was, you know, it's hard. When I was there on my, it was just her and I, and I could not get her out of that wheelchair. She tried to stand up, and I tell her, come on, Shirley, stand up. She stand up, but I, and she couldn't try to, and she, she tried to stand up and couldn't stand up, and I tried to lift her up. It was like a dead weight, and I just could not do it. But it all worked out anyway. She's doing a lot better now. She doesn't need the, the home care. Like she, of course, she's moved now. She's in a different place, so she's further away, but she doesn't need that now, but I was glad to do it. So I know what my daughter is doing. She's helping somebody else, and that's what it takes to help somebody else. You feel blessed helping somebody as much as they feel blessed having you because she's doing God's work is exactly what she's doing. God would expect her to do that. She's helping somebody else. You help those less fortunate than you. And right now, I am doing hats and scarves for the homeless. My daughter does the same thing. We both do hats and scarves for the homeless. We send them to, <coughs> well, I guess we're going to send them to North Carolina. And then we go ahead and then they distribute them from there. So it feels good to help somebody else because if they if they need help, we've got there somebody to help them. Because if I was in that situation, I'd want to be helped too. You know, I would want somebody to help me and I'm glad to be able to do it. I love doing it. I'm loom knitting. I'm loom knitting, loom -knitting hats and I'm going to loom knit scarves. I love doing it. My daughter and I started doing it and we're keeping up the trend. We both go tell each other what yarn we have and and how our things are our things are coming along, you know. So we're both enjoying helping other people, you know. And she's been also doing um, quilt squares. She crochets quilt squares where they come in, where they put a, put them together and make a blanket. So she's done that, and she's her her uh, squares have also been featured too on the news once. I think it was they, she got featured her, her her quilt squares got featured on the news because she she did some a real good job, and that's a tremendous. She did such a good job on them. So I'm really happy that, yeah, it was awesome. It's really awesome that she's doing it and I'm doing it too. I mean, she's helping her friend. She's helping her sister-in-law. And, and we're both helping the homeless. And I'm going to continue to do it. As long as God gives me breath in the body of mine, I'm going to continue to help them. Because they need help. You know, there's so many of them out there that need help. And I'm tempted to take some, start carrying some in my car. And when I see them on Sabbath, that... When I come back from church and they're homeless, I'll give them a hat, a hat and say, here, Merry Christmas or whatever. Give them a hat because they might need it. You know, we shouldn't be afraid to help other people because you never know. If, if we're ever in that situation, we want to be helped too. You know, I don't want to leave them unhelped because they, they as a lot of times that situation that they're in, they didn't ask for that situation. Sometimes they do because they want to be in that situation. Ugh. Oh man, yes, yeah, she she has. Yeah, thanks, she, thank you. Yes, she has. <coughs> yes, she has followed me. She, you know, something when she was little, I taught her how to crochet, and she's even actually a better crocheter than I am. <laughs> and she's and she's in her forties, and she's better than I am. I still say she's better than I am, but I taught her how to crochet. She's loved it. She's been doing it ever since, and I'm proud of her for it. Um. Yeah, that's true. You're right. You're right. But like I said, a lot of the homeless people, yeah, a lot of the homeless people choose to be homeless. They would rather be out in the streets than have a place to live. I don't know why they would choose that. That's a horrible to sleep on park benches, especially this time of year, especially when it starts getting real, real cold out. Now, we aren't, aren't real bad right now because I don't have my heat on right now because we're, we're in the 50s, almost 60 degrees. But Christmas, we're supposed to be cold that night. We're supposed to get rain and snow mixed. Can you imagine somebody sleeping on a park bench, 32 degrees? Oh, my goodness. 
Oh, and that would be awful. Um, yeah, I know. It's it's shocking. And it, it's sad. But if they, they want to live like that, what can you do? There's nothing you can do about it. They choose to live that way. You just have to let them go. You know, like I said, some of them, some of them don't choose to do that way. That's because of a set of circumstances that they lost their home, you know, and they've been um, homeless. And so they have to go, to, you know, um, I know. But, you know, we do have a mission here that they could go to. And, you know, they could go to the mission and, and, and be there and have a good bed to sleep in. Um, I know. No, you're right. Those park benches will be so hard. Hard as a rock. You know, I couldn't do it. But, you know, people do it. I don't know. They're, they're comfortable enough to do it. And, and they do it all the time. We've had places here where, where the homeless would set up a camp. They'd set up tents and stuff. Well, eventually they have to move because they're not allowed to be in the areas that they're in. I've seen it when I go to church on Sabbath. They'd be along Highway 99, just uh, Heidi, Highway, Highway 99 in Garfield. My daughter knows, knows where that's at. They have tent cities set up there. Well, they no longer have it there. They moved them. Some of them will go under bridges and set up tents. It's a shame, but they always go in places that they're not supposed to go. You know, they're trying to keep the city beautiful, beautiful. But, you know, a lot of the hump, and we've had homeless that camp outside our church. But the problem of it is they're desecrating it. They're leaving junk. They're leaving food scraps on the, on the, uh, on the concrete. They're leaving it a mess. And we're trying to beautify our church, and they're leaving it all a mess. So the pastor is not, not not letting homeless sleep out there anymore because it's a mess. They don't they don't clean up after themselves. You know I feel so, I feel sorry for them, but they can't be, be they can't be tearing up places like that and leaving food and and uh, paper and stuff all over the place. You know, um, yeah, you're right. <laughs> uh, yeah, that you're right. Exactly. You know, but you yeah you know. I try to help the homeless as much as I can because if I was in that situation, I'd want to be helped too. But you know something? I would rather go to the mission and hear the gospel even though I know what the gospel is and go to the go to the mission and have a bed to sleep in than sleep out on a park bench any day. But a lot of them don't want to do that. Um, yes, they do. But they're, unfortunately, they're not. And my daughter knows what it's like to be in the mission. <laughs> uh, that's a long story on that one. But uh, she didn't like it. But it was a set of circumstances that um, she, we ended up, her, her dad and I used tough love on her and she was in the mission for a while, but you know, she learned what it was like to be in the mission and she's never been there since. And I'm proud of her because she's got her act together. She's married to a man that works. They've got their act together and, and, uh, where they're, where they're at now in Missouri, they can pay their rent and she's, she, you know, you know, not maybe doesn't have a lot financially, but they're able to pay their bills every month. And that's what it takes able to pay their bills every month. I just got paid today, so I'm able to pay my bills. That's what it takes. And I'm, I'm happy that she's she's getting along a lot better than she used to. So, you know, and that's what it takes. And her working, too, is helping. She's helping with her own little income, too, because she's got more money coming in. So, if you can help anybody at all. Uh, yeah, my daughter, she was at the Mission Homeless. She did not like it. But at the time, she only had the two oldest boys. Andrew and Jared. She didn't have Christian and Tristan at the time. So she had those two boys. And but she's she's learned her lesson and she'll Hi Laura, good to see you. Welcome. Here's my here is my um pumpkin butter. You come in just at the right time. I'm almost ready to go off. But this is my pumpkin butter. I gotta let it cool off quite a while. About an hour of room temperature. Uh hi, good to see you. Oh, oh, just Andrew. Okay, that's right. Jared wasn't born yet. That's right. Andrew was little, though, but weren't you pregnant with Jared at the time? I thought you were pregnant with him at the time. But it was still not a very good place to be. Yeah, but she learned her lesson, and she has not been there since. She's been, she's had a home to be in, you know, and I'm glad for that. You know, her husband's got a good job, a good paying job, and and I'm and I'm thankful for that. You know, he's really well liked at work, and that really that really makes it makes it nice too, you know. So and they're able to pay their bills, you know, and so I'm I'm happy for her and I'm happy that she's taken the initiative to help help her sister in law to get to done what she needs to do. She gets her breakfast and helps her in the shower and you know, she doesn't have to put her to bed. She used to have to put her to bed, but she doesn't have to do that anymore. She, but she has to help her when she gets on the toilet and stuff like that. But, you know, it is what it is, you know. I'm happy for, happy for her. 
Ah, you know, I've been talking a long time. My voice is going to be getting hoarse pretty soon. I'm going to have to go and, and um, get this put in a jar. And I'm going to have to uh, get my kitchen clean up. i got a bunch of dishes in the sink I have to do. But uh, I want to show you those that are just coming in. If you didn't see it, my daughter has not seen them, and I will hold them up to the camera. Oh. Um, these are my my uh, chocolate chip, banana chocolate chip muffins. Actually, they're chocolate chip. they got bananas in them, four bananas. These come out real good. I got some muffin tins the other, other day at Walmart, and these are real good. I posted the recipe up on my Facebook page. So in case, in case you haven't seen them, go into, go into my Facebook page and my vegan, Karen's Vegan Heaven, and check it out, and go ahead and try them. Other ones have said they're going to try them, and uh, they're real, real good. My donuts are real good, too. So I'm going to continue. Like I said, I won't be on here doing a cooking scope tomorrow. Uh, yeah, they are. They are real, real good. Real good. But I won't be doing a cooking scope tomorrow. Um, yes, yes, it really is. It's a joy to do it as well as be part of it. To do it, you know, and to hear about other people doing it, you know. Like I said, my daughter and I, we're both helping the homeless, and we're both going to continue to do so as long as we can. So, anyway, I think I'm going to get off of here now because I've been talking a long time. I want to get my dishes done because I need to do those. But, like I said, I won't be doing cooking scope tomorrow. I'll probably be doing a um, walking. I may do a walking scope in the morning. Since I won't be doing cooking scope, I may come on early in the morning. It'll be after 7 my time because I I have to, uh, you know, I wait until it gets daylight. And it doesn't get daylight here until between 7 and 7.30. So I'll be doing that tomorrow. So be looking for that. So in the meantime, I thank you all for coming in and love my, my daughter too. I love each and every one of you. And you all have a great night. Take care. God bless. Bye-bye. And love you all. Bye-bye.